Great. So today is fun day, Friday fun day. Friday fun day. Hey, Ed, how are you? Goodness, how are you? Hello, Ron. I'm good, I'm good. It's nice to see you. Yes, I mean, we on Zoom. A million times a day, but it's not often that we're um, sitting on a Zoom session when you come to think about it, really, isn't it? No, no, no. But we, we thought we'd have a bit of fun today. I, you've had some bi a big lineup of people this week. It's been really nice. It's been so much fun. I've loved learning more about, uh, I think I was saying to you yesterday, you know, you know people and you think you have a pretty good friendship and a connection with them, but it's not until you actually take the time to learn about their, their culinary journey and just their life in general that you kind of go, I actually didn't really know enough about you at all. So, yeah, because we don't stop and ask people and we don't, we forget about it. And I think most people know you and I very well, but, um, you know, most people don't know about people like Eddie and, and Josh and you had Fiorella yesterday, which is fantastic. Just so interesting. Just such great ambassadors for our industry. Speaking of great ambassadors, I have to do this quick call out. She may be watching. Uh, a certain Julie Ballard, if you know this person, a major, major chef in this uh, industry and also mum to Andrew Ballard, but she doesn't say that one in public. Uh, uh, Julie, it's her birthday today. And the reason Such why a call, happy birthday to darling Julie. I called Julie out because A, she hates to be embarrassed like that. And B, I love Julie lots. And uh, Julie and I work together and miss working with her. But it is her birthday. We call that out for most people. She's on every day. That's where we thought call it out. She's such a salt of the earth person. I, I, I have to say, I just, I just adore her. Yeah. She's actually yeah. a true friend. She's somebody that um, I've come to really respect and appreciate and be quite protective of that relationship that we have. Also, she's one of Australia's best food stylists. She's also a knowledge of uh, everything culinary. She seems to you know, do uh, so much. And you've had her on before with uh, her boss, Sam Burke. And uh, I think friends. I think she's the boss, really. But you know. <laughs> she keeps him in check, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So this is Friday what are we Fun talking Day about today. So you wanted me to talk about some fun things. So we've got some fun things today. We're going to talk about some products from a very place dear to my heart, my hometown of Penrith or Western Actually, Sydney. Actually, I have to stop you there for a second because yeah. this is more than that. This week it was it was it really was interesting that you know we had Josh on earlier in the week and but but just that that whole food culture that's starting to just pop up in Penrith and the concepts and just this this exciting food world and you know you you're all over it and you know everything about it it was so funny because I think Julie was the one that actually um, said that it was more more town than it is Penrith so <laughs> that that was really quite funny and um, that's why I wanted you to come on here I just feel like nobody can sell Penrith or more town better than what you more can. Town. Uh, it, well, you know, I love uh, talking about food anywhere I go and, and I love traveling, but to be in a hometown that I'm very proud of, that I want to talk about uh, and talk about some of the fun things. There's a lot of things Penrith's known for, a lot of things people don't want to travel out for, but Penrith is really happening. It's the next big airport town uh, shared That's with exciting. Liverpool. Yeah, it's going to be a 24 hour airport. There's a lot of investment in the Penrith region. Actually, no, I shouldn't just say Penrith. Western Suburbs is such a great uh, hub for food manufacturers, uh, food producers and growers out this way. And I say that in Western Sydney uh, because when I first went for an apprenticeship uh, many, many years ago, I used to get people saying, oh, do you have running water and electricity? Because Penrith was a country town, but Penrith is so much more than that and has such a, a rich history. Penrith is 150 years old as a, an official town this year. Um, so it's been around longer than that, but officially recognized as a town. It has 38 suburbs, 
uh, in it as 500 square kilometers of ample space. So, you know, not just Penrith, we're bordered line by Blue Mountains Council, Hawkesbury Council, Blacktown and Liverpool, some of the other big um, LGAs, the new buzzword in the world. But we're not just and going to talk about great... they got the largest disposable income in Sydney. Correct. The, actually, not just in Sydney, uh, also one of the nationally largest high disposable incomes in the planet. And that's why everyone comes to Penrith. Uh, let's do a bit of an ad there. But we're also going to quickly, too, today, talk about four brand new books that are out there that people can go and buy, which are fascinating. And we're going to deep dive into four classic books that I absolutely love and talk dear to my heart and they're quite rare treasures which are really rare to talk about so let's get started Penrith if you want to come out to Penrith when everything starts opening up in COVID uh, you could be in a different state come out to Penrith even though the airport's not open for another couple of years um, we've got that ex exciting uh, venture happening. The airport is going to be 24 hours. It's Sydney's second airport, and it's at the doorstep of uh, Penrith and the mountains. So you get a lot of opportunity out here. And I get excited is wherever like I go. A, is that going to be a commercial flight airport, or is that just going yeah, to be It's going freight? to be international commercial flight, uh, freight airport open 24 hours. Uh, it is Sydney's official second airport. They're even building train lines that connect up to our current train system. Um, you know, as we know, Sydney airport is not open 24 hours because of restrictions. And out here, it's a little bit more, a uh, lot more land, uh, not, many, not as many neighbours, but I'm sure that's happening. Out here, we're going to have the largest uh, Amazon uh, distribution centre in the Southern Hemisphere. There's so many great things I can keep Aren't going. Are you getting a theme park as well? Are you getting like a Disney World? No, so we're not getting Disney World. We're getting actually a, a $500 million movie studio being built out on the shores of the old quarry in Penrith. Uh, $500 million for a filming mecca. It's going to be huge. It's where the new Mad Max or the latest Mad Max was filmed. Um, there's actually, funnily enough, a lot of creative people out in Penrith. And uh, $500 million. We're also going to have the first, world first, or not world first, first southern he hemispheres indoor ski center and we're talking snow i've and seen the um i've actually seen the plans for this it's pretty exciting 150 million dollars on the nepean river because penrith has a river we have a paddle steamer as well we beautiful river um and not many towns can claim that they have this beautiful river running through it um we're going to have uh, that ski centre in there. We also had the rowing. We had the rowing for the Olympics in 2000. Uh, there's so many things here. We even have an iFly where you can go uh, skydiving in the uh, Panthers. And very shortly, real exciting, food uh, from the Five Guys, one of the American big chains, burger chains, is actually going to open up in Penrith in a couple of weeks' time. Really? Yes, so uh, be excited about that. That's going to open. What's it right called? Right next to Krispy Kreme. Five Guys. They're, uh, they make all their burgers and their chips from scratch. They're known for their shakes. Uh, it's owned by Seagrass, uh, which own uh, Ribs and Rump uh, and things like that. But their first store is opening up to the very first Krispy Kreme. They don't own Ribs and Rumps anymore. No, they don't. But uh, that's meat they own and, multiple Meat brands. and wine and ribs and um, burgers. and. That's right. So what's the accommodation like out in Penrith as well? So there's lots of accommodation in Penrith. There's um, from Panthers, you've got McCure, a cause out here. Uh, we have beautiful hotels in um, uh, nearby Hawkesbury as well. We have hotels in the Blue Mountains not far from here as well. And there's lots of hotels available. There's also one betters. More exciting, one of your old customers, uh, and I remember talking to you about you did a delivery to them and they burnt down that night the log cabin. Remember that that on the Nepean River? That burnt down many years ago. But what's funny is they're rebuilding that and it's going to be a accommodation oh, park there too. So, so Brad Carson just said, has the river been fixed and cleaned up recently? Because obviously he's in Singapore. Um, when, he was, when, it was, when he was rowing, it was disgusting. <laughs> no, so Brad, come on. This is it's a beautiful river, Brad. Come on. <laughs> It's a it, actually, it's one of the most uh, 
exercised areas around because you can walk around the river. There's a beautiful bridge here now, Brad, that you can walk over, not like the old one before. Don't worry about that. That's gone. Well, it's still there, but, you know, Pen Penrith's exciting. You know, I've got to talk about it, Brad. You know, Penrith, um, the first tobacco. I love, first... I just love how defensive you get. And then you, like, <laughs> go into your whole, like, get up on your podium, off you go. Hey, look, you know, Charles Darwin <laughs> come to Penrith in the mid-1800s. Come on. I'm just saying. Um, so you what know, are you going to say about tobacco? That's yeah, the first tobacco, me. the first coffee, and the first chocolate plants in the colony were planted here in Emu Plains out in Penrith. So really exciting. So, so um, Mark Kaplan just said the log cabin is now a laundry property and it's correct. going to be a huge pub restaurant. Massive, massive. And it, I drove past it today. It is huge. So it's going to be, and it was on the river, on the nice part of the river. And by the way, Brad, all those houses along the river are multi-million dollar properties now. So just saying, it is a beautiful area. <laughs> Penrith Council is spending money. Just be nice because, you know, if, if yeah, we, we want to encourage people to ask questions. So um, Mark, Chaplin, Mark Kaplan said to say yes. hello. He said, hi, Chef, good to see you. And um, Brad Carson said, he's laughing, and he said the external of the river has always been nice. The water, though, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything about the quality of water. I'm talking about how great this suburb is. It's fantastic. And Bra and I have to also pass on that Brad Bennett, hi, Chef. I owe this man so much. I can't thank him enough for his constant support and what he does for the hospitality industry and its associates. How nice is that? Oh, that's beautiful. He, coming from someone like him, I'm truly honoured. Truly honoured. Fiorella so, and Gary Stokes were on there as well. Sorry. Oh, I look, don't mean everyone's on there. I don't mean right. to keep interrupting you. No, it's good. <laughs> look, you know, look, I get sidetracked. And, you know, I get excited about Penrith because... Uh, we have so many great things out here. Mushrooms are growing here, great producers, you know, white prince mushrooms. We also have orange farms. And I don't think, you know, you can have a city that's got so many different things. We have great arts and, and theatres and all sorts of stuff like that as well. And it's just a great place to visit. Uh, visit penrith.com.au is a fantastic website uh, with great restaurants. And I'm here to talk about restaurants. Now, we've um, talked about Kurt von Buren being out here, the Savory Dining Project. Kurt's a well-known chef. Uh, we've also got um, Andre Sanderson, a very famed... Uh, oh, my favourite people, God. Pastry chef. He's, I think he's amazing. Does pastry is just, like, amazing. He doesn't live here, but I'm going to claim him at the moment because Andre Sanderson is uh, doing something really exciting. And we're going to talk about that now. Some of the things that are exciting about Penrith, not only do we have great burger places, we have great pubs, we have fantastic uh, restaurants that are opening up. Um, you know, we have Ross Dobson, who has the union. Uh, it's a tapas type bar. Ross Dobson is known because he's just created a book with Fade and Press, and that's called Australia. It's the Book of Australia. It even has a recipe for fairy bread in it. It's a really good book. Oh, wow. Beautiful book to get. But Ross Dobson's a local Penrith uh, boy. And he has about 18 cookbooks on to his name, uh, really well known. We have um, Percy Plunkett's uh, fantastic coffee place, which are invested. They're going to have a ground style um, business on the river very shortly. That opens in March next year. And they're opening an Italian um, restaurant with um, gelato area. They, they're spending a lot of money in food development areas. And uh, they opened that in November. I went to Percy Plunkett's today. Uh, I got out of the house uh, and bought some takeaway because a one of these little, I'm going to show you your viewers and everyone online. I don't know if you can see this. This is the Fairy Bread Tokyo Lemington. Oh, wow. Now, now that's the Fairy Bread one. And we also have the beautiful, so these are um, Tokyo Lemington from Newtown. Look at that packaging. Oh, the packaging opens up beautifully. And this is the Honey Macadamia oh. uh, Lamington. Now, Tokyo Lamington in Newtown, they're famed because they opened um, uh, their ex N2 Gelato, their ex uh, Black Star Pastry people. And um, they opened Tokyo Lamington in, of course, Tokyo. And they come back to Australia and they opened it in Newtown. Uh, and they got these beautiful Lamingtons. And one of the, one of the funny things why I've got them uh, is Eddie Stewart said most of his customers are out in Penrith. 
So he teamed up with a local business called Percy Plunkett's. Got to plug them. They're a great coffee house. And when they're open back up, please go in. Um, they've struggled a little bit uh, during this time, but a very good coffee house. And they actually have a pop-up of Tokyo Lemonton available. And the other thing is they've got one of the other hottest tickets at the moment. And you can get these in Penrith. Thick cookies. Uh, these, these guys are a New York cookie size. You can see the box. See my hands on each side. I'm just going to show you the size. This, the Thick Cookie Company, you can buy this as Percy Plunkett's. This is a one kilo cookie. Oh a my New York God. style cookie. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, these guys are based only in, uh, in the Rocks area. But to get them, one of their main suppliers is Percy Plunkett's. It has all the thick cookie range. I'm really liking this Percy Plunkett's. Percy Plunkett, great coffee. They have Mother Sky coffee. Um, we also have um, Montecatini Small Goods, a friend of yours. You know, uh, yeah. those that know small goods. Roland Melosi used to own Melosi Small Goods, famous for their mortadella. And Roland Melosi bought Montecatini Small Goods, produced some of the... Um, Coles and Woolworths' private label uh, salamis. He does a truffle salami. He also does uh, your friend's, uh, what's, what, what's the company called? The Goose on the Loose. Goose on the Loose. So the goose salami and the duck salamis. Unbelievable. Montecatini's out here. Uh, we did have a couple of breweries out this way, but um, unfortunately our Saki brewery was a bit of a, a, a victim of COVID this year. That's a shame because that was really exciting. It was the only sake brewery out of Japan and it was produced in Penrith and it was here for over 35 years and unfortunately really? relied heavily on tourists and no tourists and they closed up only a couple months ago. Oh, that's sad. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you reckon yeah. that they'll reopen? I don't know. We're, uh, Penrith's trying to encourage people to come out here and do that uh, and look at it. It was really sad because it was a bit of an icon out here, but we still have lots out here. There's um, we have a great chocolate maker. And what I wanted to talk about, well, this is the exciting part because we've got some things to give away to people. Yeah, more well. exciting stuff. I tell you what, that biscuit was exo pretty exciting. Tokyo Lemingtons. Oh my God. The Tokyo Lemingtons. You can get them in, uh, in Newtown or in Penrith this weekend if you want. Well, we're not um, allowed to drive there. No, if, you, if, you're in the, if you're in the area like Josh Watson, Brad, you can text your family and come, you know, get out. And you can't send them to Singapore, but. You're in lockdown as well. I went to Sococo, uh, which is a very world-famous chocolate maker here in Penrith. And uh, what's exciting, Andre Sanderson actually is the chief of operations out there, running the operations room out there with all the chocolate machines. And I quickly got a glimpse, uh, a very COVID stance uh, where I was, uh, a glimpse of all the machines that he gets to run and the beautiful chocolates. But what was more important, Morgan's Coffee, I'm going to hold that up. Morgan's Coffee, really well-known, highly prized coffee bean. We're going to give these away. The owner that owns the cocoa is actually a coffee roaster as well, and the coffee's roasted here in Penrith. Uh, Morgan's have been around since 2004 and won multiple awards in coffee, uh, different coffee outlets. So we've got this beautiful coffee beans from Morgan's. Wow. You, you can give these away, Vanessa. Right I next door. I don't really want to. I want to keep them for myself. Oh, I think we should give them away to people. So I don't know how you're going to come up with this to give away. You might just select the best comments. This one I think is really cool. This is Dr. T, also a very famous award-winning tea house. Punjabi. And this is Punjabi uh, chai. This oh, is Wow. This is uh, Dr. T. Dr. T also produced in Penrith, uh, right next door to Morgan's Coffee House. So you've got a tea place, you've got coffee, and then you've got the cocoa chocolate. Now, the cocoa, oh, the, the smell in here is so divine. Now, I've got the cocoa, the beautifully boxed chocolates. Wow. Um, this one's a milk. This one is uh, from Bolivia. Uh, this one here has actually the only chocolate bar in Australia that actually has won an international English award for chocolate. Um, and it's using heirloom uh, beans. This one is probably the one that's transported what is, to America. What does heirloom beans mean? 
Uh, so they were actually preserving the knowledge of um, going back to the farmers and preserving the tradition of some of the beans because unfortunately coffee plantations have been wiped out oh, uh, really? over, over harvests. I don't know. I just know that they um, uh, are trying to re-put the knowledge back into the industry. And uh, look, these beautiful bars, beautifully packaged. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, and like this one says, goddess milk chocolate. I don't know what goddess milk chocolate is, but Tanzanian dark chocolate with coffee. Oh. And this one, I, I was like, this one's my favourite. Solomon Islands dark chocolate with mint. That's beautiful. That. Wow. Look how beautifully packaged they are. It's a cocoa, really well known. But the funny thing is, in Penrith, they don't really know about it. Um, it's known around around the world. It's known in, in uh, England, U um, US, uh, as a cocoa export, their products around. Their chocolates have won awards globally. And the interesting thing is too, they do a lot of the uh, hampers. So you see them in the gourmet, you know, like Simon Johnson and all those around, and they're made here in Penrith. So we have, there's five blocks of chocolate. I, was for like you didn't disconnect your zoom then i didn't know oh. i didn't want to be taking it over and trying to talk about it so you can give these away you can send these out to whoever you want and we also got the the tea the punjabi chai this one is unbelievable and it even has walnuts in it that's how good this tea really? is yeah beautiful and then you got the morgan's coffee as well all can from you, penrith can you order this stuff online you can order this online so coco.com.au and um so you spell get, that for me z z o k o k o and it's funny -O -K -O -K -O yeah, com dot a u yep because i'm going to go back and i'm going to order some of that um <clears throat> i'm going to get some of that tea oh the tea's beautiful that's amazing. I can always smell it here through, is the, amazing. through the Zoom. Um, and Andrew Ballard's on here. I hope you sport your mum today, Mr. Ballard. No, you probably Actually, forgot. Actually, you know what? We might send a box of that chocolate out to Julie. Awesome. For her, for her birthday. That would be really nice. Great. Fantastic. So, um, Penrith, uh, you can go onto a website, visit penrith.com.au. I can talk about it all day. There is so many great restaurants. We've got wine bars. We've got great. We've got, for some reason, we've got a massive explosion of burger places and Mexican uh, places. So we have about five different Mexican places. Uh, we've got a, a few smokehouses out here as well, which is really cool. Um, so you've got a lot of things happening. Panthers is always a great visit. Um, you know, Sam Burke comes out with his flashy car and he drives out to Penrith when he could before COVID. Yeah, I'm just being cheeky because oh. he's not on here to be able to give it back at you. I, I forgot to tell you, this is a, a secret that uh, Andre gave me today. This, oh, it's unbelievable. This is cocoa nibs from Zococo that are soaking in whiskey. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it's not, a, it's not a secret anymore. I have, oh. million, I have millions of people watch this session. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to ask about Penrith, I can actually do, there's so many things that we can show. We, we're going to host um, some chefs coming out when we open up. We're going to get a mini class out here. I'm so busy when we, get, when we get opened up. I've made so many promises. I think about taking Josh out to bloody fire door. We're going to be doing stuff and... Now we add Penrith into the mix. I tell you, I'm going to be flat out. Yeah. <laughs> but Penrith, you can stay a couple of nights if you want. There's so much to do, so much fun. There's a lot of history here. Like I said, there's arts. And we're actually called the Adventure Capital of New South Wales because we've got everything from cable skiing, ice skating, skating, to soon to have snow and uh, all that as well. We have rowing. We have whitewater rafting. Lots happening out here. So got come out and visit. Rafting. And, and oh, Andrew yeah. Ballard reckons that you've got the best barmy out there as well. Oh, we certainly do. Actually, uh, Cabramatta is probably just as good, but you know, Andrew Andrew used to live in Penrith, uh, not well, far from me. What he said was the best. He said it's awesome. There is a good one. It's right next to Burger Head, um, and the queue is massive. Even Kurt, who's running a Vietnamese restaurant, has gone over there for the barmy, and it's pretty phenomenal and uh, pretty well known. So, yes. Now... That was enough of Penrith. Let's talk about cookbooks. There's another passion that I have 
as you can see behind me, lots of books. So let's talk about so books. So many books. I love my books. Um, you know, are, they I, in I, our, are they in alphabetical order? No, um, but I know where they are. They're in groups of what they they represent. So charcuterie is just over here. You got fats and all that over here as well. And most of my meats here. I got my baking section just here. I got some premium books behind me. Um, yeah. So my modernist cuisine are down here. My fair and address over here. Like, I know where they all are. But we're going to talk about some really exciting books. But I'm going to, as I said before, I'm going to talk about some new books that everyone can go out and buy, which is really exciting. And I'm going to talk about some older books that I have in my possession, which I really love. And this is where I really get excited about books. Who would have thought that I love books? Oh, I would have. Like, you're like a history bump. So this is a brand new book, and I think it's a really relevant topic for everyone. Um uh, and I think a lot of chefs at the moment should get this book. It's not an expensive one. It's at the Cookery Book and it's at for Books for Cooks. Uh, it's about $20. It's called Surplus. And funnily enough, it was published by Amazon, Surplus. Oh, this is yeah. a book. It's called Surplus, the Food Waste Guide for Chefs, How to Reduce Food Waste in a Professional Kitchen. Now, this is um, Wojtek Voy, uh, who opened the first uh, vegan restaurant in Cambodia. And um, Wojtek is now living in um, uh, the Middle Eastern block somewhere, and he's a, a food consultant on zero wastage of food. And it's a really, it's got no pictures in it, but a beautiful little book that talks about all the things that you can do uh, with food wastage and how to minimize that food wastage. So it's quite funny that we're talking about this because um, when I saw Andre Sanderson today, he was talking about the the husk on the out of the coconut, the uh, cocoa nib. And uh, he's trying to find a, an alternative source of either creating a paper or creating a sustainable thing from the husk because there's so much wasted. Um, it, it's not really wasted, it just goes to byproduct. But how do we use that? And we should talk about sustainability a lot more. This book I only got You're this week. You're starting to though. I mean, there's so many um sustainability webinars and food waste um, entrepreneur programs and so forth all happening at the moment. It's a pretty exciting yeah. space. And, and about 10 years ago, Muscle Laboratory was one of the, the lead innovators in this space. You know, he would go to the world fairs and he would get all the rubbish out. And, um, you know, I've cooked things like banana skin um, chutneys, for example, or watermelon rind pickles, and they taste fantastic. It's, you know, not rubbish. The good thing about this book too, it talks about practical solutions for chefs in their kitchen right now to use. And um, it's I'm a book I, re I recommend. I that one. Now, one of my favorite authors at the moment, Australian author, you're, you love this book because you just got the um, uh, Plenty Fish, well, Whole Fish, sorry, Josh Nyland. He's got out a brand new book to follow on from the, um, the book that you have there, Ness, at home. This one is called Take One Fish. Absolutely stunning. This is following on from his last book. Um, and Take One Fish is a book published by Hardy Grant. And what is great is not only is the photography uh, fantastic, but he p focuses on uh, the particular fish types. Oh, and wow. He goes, and then he will do the whole recipe based on that on some of the cuts and he just goes into it in depth. Just a beautiful book. It's about $50. I just $50. love food photography. It's in, just amazing. You know, Josh is also, we talked about sustainability and this is about using mm. that, you know, nose to, to tail or the fin to tail um, story. This book is such a beautiful compliment to the first one. If you haven't got the first one, Plenty Fish. Is that what it's called? No, the whole fish. Why do I keep saying plenty fish? Whole I fish, don't have Josh it here in front of me, otherwise I would have held it up. I'm not that, sure. That's it. okay. That's the white one. But this is the, the follow one. This has only come out about three weeks ago. Fantastic book, available in all places, even Dimmix. It's probably the one to put on the Christmas list this year. Um, it's definitely a book to um, for people to get. Believe it or not, I got the, this next book I got from you for my birthday. And believe it or not, after all the books I have in my world, I didn't have it. And I think everyone should go out and get it. This beautiful book, which you have a copy of too, don't you? 
Oh yeah, I couldn't just get you. When I looked at it, I was like, I have to get myself that copy as well. <laughs> so I love this. This is Peter Gilmore's From the Earth, and I can't believe I didn't have it. World's Great Rare and Almost Forgotten Vegetables. This, I think, would have to be his best piece of work. It's and he just a beautiful, beautiful book. Again, sh shot beautifully. Like, oh, look at that. Can you see that? Yeah. I love that. Such a beautiful book. Uh, more, more. you know, uh, where did you get, you got this from, directly from the restaurant? I got you? it directly from Key, yeah. And he, um, he signed it as well. Signs it. I love this. <clears throat> beautiful book. It's beautifully illustrated. And, you know, we're talking about sustainability, but let's also talk about some of those heirloom and... Um, you know, old style uh, products that we forget about and you know not just use carrots let's understand and uh, quite an interesting uh, read for people to look at another really exciting book um is it's it's actually not a cookbook but it almost should be it's called avery it's a cocktail book oh, wow. this is if you this originally started um, and I'm just going to say the chef's name wrong, and, and I can't believe I've just forgotten the name, which is really hard. Um, you'll all know that it's Grant, um, how do I say it? Ak Ak Achas? Grant, hang on, I'm going to look at this now. I've gone blank. I thought it was Grant Achamist. Anyway, Grant from Alinea. <laughs> <laughs> the Avery is a, a side project uh, to their yeah. business. And what is fascinating, this is, all, you know, like modernist cuisine, you've got modernist cuisine. Um, this is, I think, the cocktail version of modernist cuisine. Wow. And it, the photography, it started as a, a Kickstarter project. And it's got some beautiful photography of the cocktails and how to do them. Some of them have 20, 30 steps. It, I think it's just a beautifully referenced book. You now can only, you originally could only buy it on Kickstarter and it was about $80. It's, a, it's about $110 now published. The most unbelievable cocktail, cocktail book that I've ever had. And it's just a fascinating read, even though I don't drink that much. Just beautifully shot and smoking and uh, some of the things like the rum Manhattan in an airbag and smoking it. Really? Yeah. So what's, you, what's, what's Kickstarter? Kickstarter is uh, essentially um, uh, like a funding project um, website. So, for example, uh, artists or someone comes along and um, uh, Solid Kinetics have launched a lot of their fry pans, uh, Australian-made fry pans, uh, industrial pans, uh, called yeah, the Solid Kinetic fry pans. They launch them on Kickstarter. If the project gets funded, then that, that artist will get the money to go and do it. And you, as, as an investor, uh, when you buy the book at $80 or whatever, it's the, whatever the price is, you get a first copy of the book and that sort of stuff. But now it's so well liked, this book, The Avery, that people have now put it out there um, um, on published product you can go buy it on amazon books um i think it's about 110 dollars. it is it is really thick and really heavy it's not just a cocktail book for the uh you know the enthusiast it's a good uh lounge room table book so people could look at it it's really beautiful and uh if you have it on your library i think people are going to go wow you know your cocktails really well um i don't get excited about cocktail books but this one is like a cookbook. So. Cocktails have really had a resurgence in the last couple of years. And I think, I don't know whether it was kind of just after COVID and everyone was sort of making, they kind of pivoted their business and they started making cocktails and um, were selling them to people. And businesses were doing so well on making cocktails that it's almost like become the new thing. And there's so much beautiful gin and whiskey being oh. um produced at the minute as well. Australia has the largest amount of uh, gins that have been distilled. There's some great expressions from uh, Four Pillars and uh, Archie Rose, those sort of guys. And we've got some great distillers in Australia and we should be very proud of that. I've got you a fantastic... not have a gin distillery? 
No, uh, but uh, talking to the Cocos owners, they are looking at running a still, uh, probably a whiskey um, and, and doing that. So th that's something to come out. And that's something Penrith doesn't have. We don't have really good sourdough. So if you want to open a sourdough shop, I'm going to be your first person there to buy it because I have to go elsewhere to buy sourdough. And I'm not buying it from Morris and Coles because it's not real sourdough. That's interesting, isn't it? It's funny how different areas really lack one thing. And I'm sort of in that Hornsby area and we have no good fish and chips here. So if yes. anyone wants to make like a lot of money, open up a fish and chip shop. There used to be one at Penna Hill, but it's gone now. So There's just not a single decent fish and chips takeaway here at all. See, people, there's some great opportunities. And actually with cocktails, if you're using cocktails, high margin, Yes, they take some time to do, but they're good because you're using multiple spirits and it's a bit of an art form. You know, employ a mixologist, they are a real thing and mixologists really are worth their money, uh, especially in a restaurant. I wouldn't mind going and doing a mixologist course. Uh, you can do it. And they, um, funnily enough, we used to have the, and uh, Martin up in Northern Territory from Fat Mango, mm -hmm. he talked about the bar awards and they actually talk about mixologists and the ones that are gonna win awards. And it's actually cocktail competitions, like uh, cooking competitions. And it's just phenomenal to see that um, people can, you know, there's flamethrowers and spirit pourers and they, you know, chucking things around. It's beautiful. But what I love about uh, cocktail making and mixologist is that they use premium ingredients. Sometimes they're using, you know, they use bitters, like we talked about bitters, you know, instead of just using any store, uh, you know, use one of the gourmet bitters, like the chocolate bitters and things like that to really you know, create that heightened uh, experience. And cocktails are the ultimate sensory experience. Unbelievable. Can I ask you a really stupid question? Yes. No stupid question. Can you, can you use a vinegar in a cocktail? You certainly can. That is traditionally oh. called a shrub. A shrub is uh, using the vinegar and it's quite... A shrub was the original um, uh, kombucha, essentially. You got oh, those vinegar okay. nuts. So you could use apple cider vinegars. Uh, and a shrub is normally a savory, more a savory cocktail with the vinegar in there. And vinegar gives that ultimate umami taste as well. So really quite interesting. You can just do um, one of the ones you can just do is like apple cider vinegar, some well, crushed I'm, mulberries. I'm like, what about smoked pineapple? You oh, certainly I just can't, could. I, it's just jumping out of me that that would be like amazing. Well, one of the funny you say that because a lot of trends in mixologists, uh, they use smoking uh, at the moment to really deliver, you know, especially things like whiskey and bourbon, using a smoke gun in there and you get that. So, using the pineapple vinegar, we could get some mulberries or um, blackberries because they're coming in season right now, put them in a glass, crush them up, some soda. Um, maybe a nice gin, maybe a green ant gin, and then top it up with um, some of the smoked pineapple, uh, but maybe something a little bit more subtle. So maybe like a chili gin at the moment. They're like real green ants. Yeah, they're have you? Oh, we haven't talked about that, have we? So one of the um, a great producer in South Australia does the green ant gin. Um, Renee Rizepi loved this when he when he come and opened Noma in Sydney. Uh, the green ant gin is using green ants. They're in the, the gin and they have this coriander, lime and mint note. And you mm. get this and it flavours the gin. So it's an indigenous gin. They've also got a native berry gin now out from that. But the green ant gin is phenomenal and brings these really deep, deep flavours. Unbelievable. And you put it in your mouth, it's like, wow. And that, this is the thing about cocktails. And I've got a book... Um, about spirit making from the early 1800s and they even made the, distilled uh, beetroot into vodkas for example and gives you a really nice earthy complexity we've known for hundreds and hundreds of years of how to master spirits and produce some amazing uh, techniques like using different uh, woods and uh, aging techniques in the barrels you get these deep, rich flavours in your whiskies, right through to your, your vodkas, your bourbons. And I think it's one of the true sensory delights. And that's probably why people get excited by, you know, mixologists and, you know, just even a bartender knowing a really good whiskey versus a good gin and, you know, using the right bitters, for example, in a gin makes a big difference. 
you buy really cheap um, soda water, for example, or um, um, yeah, you soda with different soda waters can really affect the flavor of that product that you're drinking. So if you have this great gin that you love and you taste it and you're like, oh, what's wrong? Maybe it's the soda water or what, how the, the guys have made it for you. So that's amazing. Well, fun. Do you reckon that they'll, do you reckon that the, is there books that you can, that you know of where they're actually matching sort of different gin profiles with food? Oh, for sure. There is lots of books out there that are starting to marry spirits out um, with food. That would be a good lunch. There, there is lots that you can do. And it's actually quite interesting. Um, friends of ours, uh, the Sam Prince group, Amanda Fuller, they have gin masterclasses online that you can do right now before uh, out of lockdown. Uh, they've got two classes. If you go on to, um, I think it's King Kyoto or Mexico. Um, Probably in Mexico at the moment, I would say. Could yeah, there's wrong, a gin but... masterclass that they do and you can actually get, they'll send you the pack and you can taste the different gins and it's going with food pairing. So there's lots of courses online people can do, but one of our friends actually do it. I love that. So we've got 40 minutes already and I'm going to talk about four books that I absolutely love that I don't often show. And um, what is the most number one book that every chef should have in their, their library? Um, a Scofia. I, no, I think LaRusse Gastronomic. Oh, okay. That's probably the, okay. LaRusse Gastronomic is probably the, the Bible of cooking. And if any young chef is out there, go get a copy of LaRusse. There's modern copies. There's one right behind me there. Um, I love the LaRusse. It's, it's, it is an encyclopedia. It goes section by section how dishes are done. Brad Bennett, you know, he would teach us at the, the school. Same with Gary. You know, some of the you know dishes, even knowing what a Chateaubriand. LaRousse is like the ultimate compendium. I have 35 copies of LaRousse, not just the modern one. I have the modern one, but I have all the original copies and I have a, in my hands right now, and look at that beautiful leather binding and the gold gilt. This is the original, one of the original English copies of LaRousse Gastronomic, the very first English edition. Um, th that one before that is the French one. I've got five copies of the French. This is the um, late 1800s. It's such a beautiful, beautiful book. It was one of the, and I'm just going to hold this up. It's a really heavy book and I want to lose. But this one's actually hand, like the hand paintings in the original LaRousse. And I think this, over the years, because um, LaRousse was started by Prosper Montag and Prosper Montag was a guy, and, and you know what LaRousse means, don't you? No, tell us. LaRousse means encyclopedia. So gastronomic, obviously food. So LaRousse, so if you ever see LaRousse and a subject next to it, it's an encyclopedia of that subject. And LaRousse gastronomic is the epitome of uh, food. And I just love this book. This is one of my favorites, even though I've got so many different copies. I've got some that have got beautiful inlay in the cover. Um, most famously in uh, Hannibal Lecter, he actually has a LaRousse Gastronomic and he actually has one of the original uh, covers. And the LaRousse, quite funnily enough, has been lots of movies. Uh, one movie I'm going to talk about in a second, um, Julia Child, she gets given a LaRousse Gastronomic when she's studying in France. And uh, that was in Julie and Julia. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It was about 19 ye years ago. Um, and uh, they get a LaRousse Gastronomic and that's how uh, Julia learns to cook. And Hannibal Lecter uses a LaRousse, uh, you know, of how he has his wine and, you know, his uh, lamb kidneys or lamb fry in, in that movie. So quite gross. But this is the, a beautiful book because it's one of the first ones with the English uh, language. It's got the old style ovens. It's just a beautiful encyclopedia. It's one of my most prized possessions. And if anyone wants to have a look at it, if they're in New South Wales, I'm more than happy to bring it along. Well, Josh Watson wants to have a look at your collection. A lot of people do. It, even, um, Sam, Josh, you're welcome anytime. I can talk books all day. I want to talk about a book that I just talked about, Julia and Julia. Julia Childs, American cook. She was, if you actually see her on TV, she it was kind of like our um, Ma, um, Margaret Fulton. Uh, Julia Child really wanted to teach uh, Americans how to cook. And she created a, a great book. Uh, I've got uh, Mastering the Art of French Cookery. Right, a beautiful series, two part. 
and uh, she teamed up with some famous people. I've got one of the original ones. This is volume two. Julia Child and uh, Sim Simka Beck or Simone Beck, wow. uh, who is one of the original authors. This book is um, had many different iterations. And if you see Julia and Julia, uh, it's mentioned a few times as well as LaRousse. I don't, some of the recipes I would question, but that's, that's just me being fastidious. What I find really cool about this book in particular is, and it's one of my rarer ones, Simone Beck has actually personally signed it, not to oh, wow. me, but it was to someone else. And I just, I feel really a, a part of history that I've got, you know, her signature. I've also got a book signed by Julia Child, not in this book, but um, Simone Beck wasn't as famous as Julia Child, but she was actually more of a pioneer in food because she was writing this book before Julia actually translated it in France, France to American. And Simone Beck is just a pioneer of food. To actually hold that and have a book signed by her, I just love it. It's an original copy. It's uh, it's a first pressing um, of Where the English copy. Where do you find copy. these books? Look, you know, there's some great book buyers out there in book places. Um, so Cookery Book, uh, no, not Cookery Book, Books for Cooks down in Melbourne is one of the most biggest pioneers. Uh, Tim White, as you know. Uh, he, uh, very passionate cookbook store. And every time I go to Melbourne, I always want to go down there. It's at Victoria Markets. And he not only has brand new books, but he has old books as well. And uh, normally he sends you a list and go, Adam, I've got all these books. And I've got books everywhere at the moment of where I bought from them. And I absolutely love it. And I also do my research too on books. Uh, there's a lot of book shows um, and I just love books. Um, this one here is one of my most, this is one of the most highly sorted after books out on the planet. It's called Garmonia, this book here. It's from the late 1800s. Uh, this is a second edition. Uh, this is the first um, English version. Um, and Garmonia is the art of preserving game. And it would become like a Bible. Uh, and it's highly sought after because the recipes are phenomenal, but the pictures in it too, and I'll just hold this up very gently. Um, these are oh. beautiful hand-drawn plates that have been reprinted in this book. Uh, it's a very rare book to get. Um, I have this one and I have the original version of this before this, which is a bit more precious. I wouldn't hold it up. And um, early, uh, late 1800s. And it's just a real good manual about different attributes of game. And even though it's been recorded in lots of books around the planet, this was the first one that actually stopped and looked at why certain game would um, preserve better than others. So it talks about duck and it talks about hunting. And um, this book is uh, been treasured by collectors since 1837. Uh, it was private. It was privately originally printed for the author Lawrence Rothstone in 1837, and is now recognised as the earliest book dealing in detail uh, planting of game co coverts and preservation of pheasants, duck, and many other game. So wow, it's quite interesting. You know, it's actually Beautiful. really hard to find really good books on game. Yes, it's and really difficult. My, you know, you know my passion about. Um, charcuterie and, and learning uh, you know the small goods world and I've worked in the small goods world I actually do have quite a few books on games so if anyone wants to know about different types of games so I have everything from goat to uh, bear I have a book on bear uh, I have a book on different pheasants uh, different birds poultry uh, I have um, also some modern books you know kangaroo and things like that as well but I have a beautiful book on venison that's quite old. Um, and it's just all about the different ways of using venison. So there are some books out there. They are rare. Um, what I suggest too is if you can't get to these cookbook stores, do one of my secret passions and go into a secondhand bookstore or a secondhand, uh, you know, like the Smith's family and look at the book section. Yes, there's lots of women's weekly books and all that. But if you're a real collector, you can find some amazing prizes and funnily enough, I've paid, you know, three, four dollars for some really rare books um, in the Smith family. And so if you're ever shopping with me and I'm out going into secondhand places, it's because I love my books. One of the rarest books I'm going to talk about, I actually have two signed copies of this book. 
uh, not of the same book, but two signed copies by an author. And I don't often show this book. It's just one of my most favourites. The rarer one is in there. It's in pristine condition. It's in a glass cabinet. Um, and I look after that one. I actually would need gloves to handle that one because to touch it, when you first get that book, I cried when I first opened it. And Brad Bennett's going to love this book, no matter what we do. Um, the modern father of cooking is August de Scoffier. We've had many greats in the world. We've had Paul Bacuse. We've had Anton Karem. We've had so many greats. Funnily enough, I've even got signed Paul Bacuse books. Um, but August de Scoffier is what most of us learnt, you know, how to do different things in the, the brigade system and how we wear our uniform is all tribute to August de Scoffier. And he worked for Kings, cooked for Queens, uh, worked in you know, the Savoy in London, which you've got to visit when you go over in London next year. Uh, even just stay there, uh, August Escoffier, and 150 years of, you know, that man being around, and Brad's been to dinners, and it's just amazing what he has done. And this is this is one of his last testimonials, La Guide Culinaire. Look at the book binding on that. It's so beautiful. I don't know if everyone can see that. This is an August Escoffier original. This is a, a version one, limited edition book. It's been reprinted in numerous times in English, but I wanted to show everyone, and I'm going to be very careful on this one, Vanessa. Look at that. Vanessa, can you see that? Yeah. Who's it signed by? Escoffier. Escoffier. I have two signatures of Escoffier. This is in the French version. It is like La, La Russe. Uh, it was essentially Escoffier's notes of his life. Uh, I have two books signed by him and, you know, to have something from history of a man that has, you know, shaped the craft that I love every day, that excites me every day. And I know I don't often talk about this. I get really excited and really emotional about it and the smell of the book and just the love of it. This one's a little bit more damaged than my pristine one that's there, um, but it, it, it's from the late 1800s. So it's, it's pretty well kept it's a it's not a bad quality but to have a book signed not only one but have two books signed by august escoffier um definitely something that i cherish every day wow so that was a real snapshot of books in my library i, I do have different books on different topics and if you ask a topic i definitely have it i have books on truffles i have books on uh, garlic or just books on potatoes even so if anyone wants to, I'm more than happy. I love sharing knowledge of the books. Getting new books, we learn, we create, we inspire. Getting old books, we actually recreate. One of my um, uh, little hobbies that I'm doing at the moment is recreating recipes from the past. So getting books like Mrs. Beaton's um, cookbooks. And if you have a Mrs. Beaton's, by the way, Mrs. Beaton's is the first cookbook in the world and I don't know if you knew this, the great exhibitions during uh, Queen Victoria's time um, and Prince Albert, Mrs. Beaton was the first one to put a recipe the way we need to read a recipe. Oh, so okay. normally, so if you look at LaRousse in the original, it's all like in a paragraph. So the method yeah. and the ingredients are all together. Mrs. Beaton's was the first one to call out the ingredients separately from, and it's a, a part of history in the late 1800s where she changed the style of cookbooks. But that's because being a female, we're just super organised and we just can't handle like that all of that writing. Like it just makes sense, right? She wanted to make <laughs> cooking simpler for everyone. <laughs> um, and so she's the first person in history to pull out the, re the ingredients from the method so that it was clearer, so that actually funnily enough that you say it because housewives then could buy the ingredients or the... The servants could buy the ingredients properly and they could cook that dish properly. And what we know today is a How recipe. How far we've come. There's no, there, it's not just housewives anymore. It's, um, <laughs> it's a quality, isn't it? It's a quality now. But, you know, I do the, I love cooking. I don't do all cooking at home. I know that. But what I love is that you've got a book that you can do it. And I'm actually recreating some of those recipes as we speak. Um, you know, they're in the old, the old system. Uh, so they're in pounds and out of that measurement. So the fun's creating it. 
Um, I've even got some. You just ask course. Alexa. Alexa will tell you how to convert pounds into grams. I've even got old books on like uh, old sweet making. You know, so the sweet old meat making at home. Yeah, uh, this is uh, you know making your own bonbons, your pralines, your caramels, your glacé fruits, and just finding a, a recipe in there that you like. Um, this is actually a really good point. Anyone that gets their grandmother's cook cookbooks or notes. Yeah, get the recipe and preserve it. I think this is one thing we've lost over the last couple of years. And this is called uh, granny skills. Going back to what our grandparents or our parents used to do uh, or our great grandparents and understanding what we're doing and keeping that knowledge going through and passing that down. And I think we need to take a, a lesson from indigenous Australians where they talk about stories and their, their culture is shared in those stories. Um, you know, Westerners really don't share stories. We need to share recipes. And I think this is a testament for the next legacy of your life. So, you know, Brad, you know, leave your recipes around for, um, you know, for your kids and your grandkids. You know, this is the legacy. You know, what what did your mum make that, you know, we really loved and we loved eating? Or did your dad do something really quirky um, on the barbecue? What, what was it? And put those notes out there and, Get people to read them and, and cook them and pass that knowledge down. And, you know, you know well, some of the rest. You Sorry. know what? Speaking of um, grandparents, we've actually got one just joined us. He thinks he's really funny, Mr. Lachlan Botel. And, oh. um, and he said, Sorry, he's late, but have you been to the Gastronomy Museum in Adelaide? Yes, I have. It's amazing. It is good. And when you go to France next year, actually, hi, Lachlan, by the way. I love you, Lachlan. Um, yeah, you when, decide to do a dad joke. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll have to look at that one back later. Book on oh. frogs called Reddit. <laughs> That's funny. Actually, I could have joked the other day. I could have told, I could, now you started me on dad jokes, Lachlan. This is bad. How did the hamburger wear his hair? In a bun. <laughs> <laughs> Lachlan, that is your fault. Man. Sorry. Um, that was a bit funny. When you go to France, there is so many beautiful cooking museums, and uh, the original Le Cordon Bleu in France, you can go in, in Paris, but there's also chocolate museums, and learning about the history of chocolate through, through a museum is just fascinating. Guys, I know I sound old, but get out there and understand some of our culture because. You understand where we are, where we cove to, and why we, you know, we talk about sustainability now as a new trend. Oh, wow. But back in the, you know, in my grandparents' day, my grandmother used to always keep the dripping under the sink, all the fat, and she used to always reuse it. And I'm like, what's she doing? And that memory, and so I've actually bought a fat tin, not that I'm going to always do it, but just having the, she used to put all the drippings in there because she grew up in the Great Depression and she used to use it all the time. And I never understood why. And we talk about sustainability. She had the most frugal time of her period. Sorry, is Lachlan telling more jokes, is he? No, Chantelle Elliott just joined us and I just smile because I just smile whenever I think of Chantelle. She's beautiful. Yeah. So that was it, Vanessa. That was books and well, new and old. Well, I done an amazing up. job. If anyone and has as Lachlan any said, then the jelly below the fat was called grand juice. Friend you. <laughs> You're funny. He's on a roll. He's on a roll. I, I like that one. I think he got the jab yesterday. Did he? Yeah, I, I think he did. I'm pretty sure he did. He put it all over Facebook with his big photo opportunity. Oh, he did. Yeah, he got it the other day. Yes, uh, his second jab. I think he got finally. Him yeah, and his lovely wife. It's really nice. So. If anyone has anything, that was Friday, Monday, it, hopefully it, I didn't disappoint. He's such a big baby. He said it killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Right um, but if anyone has any questions, Vanessa, on Penra for food from the Western suburbs, or new or old books, please let me know. I'm more than happy. Um, hopefully I didn't let anyone down after the stellar lineup of people you had, and then you got Friday and you got me. So... Oh, hopefully not please somewhere. you just actually bring them all together perfectly you're like the <laughs> you're like the, the glue that holds us all together 
Oh, there you go. I love that. That's my legacy from now on. <laughs> well, my friend, it's been an absolute privilege. And um, Gary Stokes just said it perfectly. He said, you're a fountain of knowledge. And um, you absolutely are. I can't wait to come out in Penrose. I can't wait to see Andre and see what he's doing. That just sounds so amazing. There's so many great chefs out here. You know, you've seen Kurt, when what he did, and that was a small snippet. Uh, we're going to get Gary and some of his friends out here as well. Uh, but you had Josh on this week, a great Penrith person. Brad Carson online is ex-Penrith. You know, uh, Andrew Ballard's ex-Penrith as well. So you've got a lot of people that have come from out the West. Uh, be proud of that. I, I I don't like people asking, where you know, do you have running water or electricity anymore? Uh, yes, we're actually uh, really well known for that. We've got, we've got yeah. Warragamba Dam just down the road, but people think water comes to Sydney out of the tap and don't realise it comes from this dam. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. But, yeah, and I think I showed you before the smoked pineapple vinegar. I'm going to try that in a, um, a cocktail. I said to Daryl that I was going to give it a bit of a shot and try some different things with it this weekend. But yeah, smoked pineapple, gorgeous, some fresh berries, like maybe some blueberries. Gorgeous, blueberries. gorgeous product, my God. Have you tried his smoked honey? A great product. His smoked honey is just phenomenal um yeah actually vanessa i just had an idea maybe in a couple of weeks time uh i just all this wonderful old kitchen alia behind me maybe we start uh we talk about some of the old kitchen alia that i've got and some um the changes kitchen in what kitchen alia so kitchen alia is uh all the um as um Is I get it a paraphernalia about. no it's uh cooking cooking paraphernalia essentially so uh, kitchen alley is all the old cooking utensils, um, knives, swords, that sort of thing, the fun stuff. My wife calls it uh, uh, old cooking crap. Um, but, you know, I've got some really good things here that we can talk about different tools and what they are, what where, the, um, where we come from. I've got one of the original toasters around, so I can show you that. And beautiful kitchen alien. And just talk about some really old school tools and where the world has come. So if you want to do that, more than happy well i tell you what how about you've got a few things to give away there which you mentioned yes. before so um we'll we'll open this up until next friday but how about people tell us um something that they'd like to know more about in the comments section or if there's something of interest in the the world of food that you'd like to to know a little bit more about and um for the best feedback and the best choices we can send out um a little gift and if we yep. don't have enough gifts i will get more gifts so we can do a taste of penrith so as can... many comments as possible would be amazing this coffee is oh unbelievable i'm actually going to send that to brad bennett and i'm going to send the tea to um gary stokes because i think that that would be so amazing in his cafe in jamie's kitchen fantastic so, and the coffee, it'd be interesting to see what Brad thinks. Um, it's just an opportunity of connecting people. And, you know, that's what we do. We, we are connectors. Well, hopefully everyone enjoyed that. And, and I can't fight, wait to see everyone's comments. Yeah, and, cannot uh, wait. So, listen, have a great weekend. Thank you. Um, I can't believe it's Friday already. But, hey, I'm not complaining. We're one step closer to getting out of this freaking lockdown. So yeah, go get vaccinated if you've got the choice. Go get it. David Crowley is really not that bad. I've been double vaccinated and it's not a drama. I hate needles and I got it done. Lachlan, I'm yeah. And I actually might say just quickly while we're here, Unilever mm. have got appointments. If anybody um is wanting to have the jab, reach out, just put it in the comment and I'll send you the link and you it's can go on link. to um and make an appointment through um Unilever where they're opened it up for all hospitality and frontline workers now to get vaccinated with Pfizer. So let me know. I'm more than happy to pass on those details. Your uh, entire work, workplace can go. I got uh, someone into it yesterday. They had uh, bookings available. You don't have to wait long waits. And you get free ice cream and sanitizer at the end. Really good service. And Unilever is a, a great support of this industry, a great food manufacturer in this country. It always makes me want to go back and just get jabbed again so I can get ice cream and hand sanitizer. Yeah, anyway. I'm just going to pretend that we can do it. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Mwah, mwah, See you mwah, all. Mwah. We'll Bye. see you next week. We've got Brad Carson on on Monday. So. 
We'll oh, see you on. He'll, he'll be coming in live from uh, Singapore. In lockdown. <laughs> Bye. See you all.